Hey guys, I'm back. Just uh, recently got back from uh, South Carolina, went to the bike rally at Myrtle Beach. And uh, I figured I'd just uh, tell you about the uh, adventures that were had <laughs> while down south. So, yeah, I've been back for a couple of days now and uh, it feels so weird being back on the Riker. <laughs> Spent many, many miles on the Spider, and it functioned perfectly as I expected. But uh, before we get into it, you know, do me a favor: like, subscribe, notifications, yada yada yada. Uh, let's run this intro. Enjoy the intro. So, Myrtle Beach bike rally in 2024 in the bag how'd it go it went well it went well it was a fun time i went down with my boys from the mc i think there were like uh, nine of us and yeah, quite frankly if it wasn't for them it probably would have been a bit of a wash uh, the weather was good it was hot you know and of course I had the wrong jacket on. I didn't have my summer jacket on. I had like a mid-weight, so I sweat my ass off. Uh, <laughs> but when I left to head down there, it was uh, a lot colder up here. And it has uh, gotten warmer precipitously. Like spring just went, nah, screw you. And we're just going right to summer. So I was sweating a lot. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, you know, just on that note, it's really funny because, like, you know, I live in New York, obviously. It's, you have to have a helmet on, and, uh, you know, I do, I do try to put my gear on as much as uh, is appropriate to the activity. So, when I'm down there, and I'm just riding a spider with, with the boys, and, and I got, like, no helmet, just a pair of goggles and my gloves. I don't have my riding jeans on. I don't have my jacket on. I don't have my helmet on. <laughs> Dude, that feels so weird. So freaking weird. And it's just like, you, you kind of get used to it and I could understand the thrill of it, but probably more because like, now we're doing like 65 miles an hour down, uh, was it Route 17 or something like that? And it's like, I don't have a helmet on. Why am I doing this? This is really stupid. Yeah, because like, you know, we're not on the highway per se. Uh, but it is a main thoroughfare. There's lots of cars around you. And uh, you're going at a good clip. You're going at a good clip. And, you know, you get a tire blowout or, God forbid, something happens. You got no helmet on. And uh, I don't know how people do that on a daily. You know, because South, South Carolina, Delaware, a couple of states uh, don't have helmet laws. It ain't for me. It ain't for me. I mean, it's... If it, if it wasn't so damn hot, I probably wouldn't have done it. And uh, when I went down last year, yeah, when I went down last year, did the same thing. Didn't, uh, took the opportunity to uh, not put the helmet on a few times. And it felt, weird there. it felt weird then, too, just like it does now. But to each his own. Like I said, if you grew up with that, then it probably feels kind of second nature. Uh, if you grew up like I did the other way around, it feels really weird. To each his own. You, you don't want to wear a helmet, don't wear a helmet. It's just your life. Then, of course, you know, when you when you just ride in the, uh, your short sleeves there, you're going to get sunburn. <laughs> so, you need a lot of sunscreen down there. But, that's beside the point. <clears throat> so, how'd the trip go? It went alright. Uh, you know... My boys left from Staten Island at a god-awful hour, and they got rained on coming through New Jersey because we took the Cape May Ferry, which is in the, didn't know, it's the southern tip of, uh, southern tip of New Jersey, and then the ferry is like about an hour or so, a little over an hour, and, uh, leaves you in, uh, Lewis, Delaware. So, I stayed at the in-laws, which is, uh, only like, let's say 30 miles from the ferry, so I got to sleep later. 
and I met my boys there. Well, they met me, you know, because I was early. And then we headed out. The first day, we rode from, well, the other guys, they went from Staten Island through New Jersey. It's about 150 miles, give or take. Took the ferry, and then uh, Delaware, Maryland. Then we went down to uh, Virginia, and we stayed over at the, uh, in North Carolina. We overnighted. And then the next day we took off uh, through North Carolina into South Carolina, finding, uh, we stayed at North Myrtle Beach. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, we were gonna do the Tale of the Dragon. Uh, apparently that's not on the uh, agenda for this year. Because once we got down there, I mean, we're, we're all old men, all right? We're old. Once we got down there, then we realized that if we're gonna do the Tale of the Dragon, it's like four hours away in one direction, and then it's like 14 hours home. So we said, screw it, you know, lost our deposits on the room. And we just uh, stayed in South Carolina for an extra couple of days. Went to the beach, that was fun. We did go to the rally, and uh, now I've only been to two rallies. Uh, and both of them were last year. One was uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, and the other one was in uh, Ocean City, Maryland. And I personally like the Ocean City, Maryland better, but yeah, uh, the one in South Carolina, I mean, if is it worth traveling to? And this is totally a personal opinion, I would go, no. You know, it, it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it like a destination rally. Let's say like a Laconia, a Sturgis, or something to that, which I haven't been to, but from what I've seen. Uh, so, what we do? You know, you go down to this rally, and it's like, okay, there was a band there, I guess, at the main venue, there were a couple of them. So you had some music, and it was basically just on dirt. You know, there's more like a carnival. And, you know, if you're not in the market to buy, you know, apparel or, you know, get a new, a new uh, seat for your bike, there's really nothing there. You know, it's not like there was a whole bunch of bars set up and you're driving through the middle of a town and you could just park your bike or take a cab or Uber or something like that to the venue and get yourself hammered, look at beautiful women ser serving you drinks and shit. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It's, <laughs> you know, there were a couple places to buy a beer, you know, like a little corral thing. It, 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 eh. Like I said, it, the vibe, it wasn't like a big, big thing vibe. Uh, let me put it to you that way. And, uh, the thing that made the trip for me was going back to that, some of you might be old enough to remember this, but that old school blue collar men's thing where it's just like, you just bust balls constantly. It's like, you know, one guy, the group chooses who's, who's getting piled on for the day. And then that guy can't say anything right. You know, it's just ball busting relentlessly. So that was fun. And I do miss that. You know, especially in today's day and age where you can't say anything. And then you can hang out with your boys and you can say whatever the hell you want. And that was fun. Uh, you know, we ate a few places. Had alligator for the first time. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it does uh, does taste like chicken, but what they don't tell you is that texture. It doesn't have the texture of chicken. I, for one, will tell you that the texture of these alligator bites that I had was like nothing I've ever had before. I, I, it's akin to maybe like overcooked fish, maybe. It was kind of tough, kind of chewy. But it does, it does taste exactly like chicken, so 
taste wise it wasn't half bad yeah it, do I have anything bad to say about it not necessarily uh, it did not have a bad experience just if you if I went there with any type of uh, preconceived notions of this was gonna be this great get-together and all that shit I'd be like then I would be disappointed but I kind of knew what I was getting into it's it's not a big it's not a big rally it's not a big to do you know and if I had to come from a state or two over it would probably definitely be worth it but uh, traveling through four or five states probably not the best use of time and I'll just leave it at that one of these days you know hopefully we'll get to one of the bigger the bigger ones and see what that's about you might have noticed or maybe not that I got a new uh, new lid here this uh, Avant X I think it is LS2 whatever not bad and uh, that's a funny story so one of my buddies like needs to get rain gear he's calling me up and I'm like all right, you know we'll go to cycle gear you know and by the way just pick me up I'll take the ride with you which I should have known was a mistake right from the bat because I cannot go to one of these stores without buying something I probably don't need so uh, you know I hopped in his car we, we drove over to New Jersey to cycle gear and uh, <laughs> he had a, uh, a flip lid you know uh, modular and it's a store brand it says Sedici whatever it is and he bought one of those and I bought he was looking at this one now he didn't pull the trigger on it but I personally do not like conventional modulars you know you flip it up and now you got this giant sail at the top of your head and quite frankly I don't find a need for that in my life or in my writing uh, because it's not that the the chin bar and, and stuff doesn't come off it just flips up and it's been on the heavier side and all that jazz I've always liked this style where the chin bar when you unlock it it can it rotates all the way to the back so it unlocks the visor it moves the visor up the visor slides down or the chin bar comes out and it goes over the visor and flips into the back so if you're so inclined you could ride down the highway look at the size of that turkey right there yeah yeah go go peacocking uh yeah so it flips over and then you could just have the fit the uh face shield down or you could put you could put glasses on if so inclined or sunglasses whatever and have the visor up the chin bar in the back and you could go completely open face I would demonstrate it for you right now but unfortunately this has got a little temporary modification on it to hold the microphone so you can hear me and it won't let me retract the chin bar up but you know I have a couple of helmets and uh, one of these days I'll get around and uh, I'm gonna I guess I'll probably do a review of uh, my helmets <laughs> you know and um, this one like I said did the entire trip with this just this helmet or no helmet at all and I did use it as a full face as you see now I've done it with the thing flipped back I've done it with just the uh, glasses on and uh, it ha it did work as advertised in all the scenarios so if you just want the face shield it worked if you just want the chin bar with the visor up it worked if you wanted everything up it also worked you know it, it's not ridiculously expensive like in uh, a rye or a showy but then again you know it's not handmade it's made in China so it's gonna be cheaper yeah they're definitely coming along coming along with that junk out there yeah so but it did perform as advertised and I'm quite happy with the purchase I'm not gonna lie and uh, I have subs subsequently got rid of the uh, the Sedici uh, 
the Sidichi helmet. I passed that off to a friend of mine who didn't have one at all. So I'm like, here, just, just take it. Which kind of sucks because I bought the damn thing and I never used it. Like literally, it's like brand new. Another thing that I was doing on this trip was uh, I changed the way I shift the uh, spider. And I'm definitely going to have to do a video about that one, I think. Because I was adjusting how I ride and I was looking for information. And I'm not going to lie, there was absolutely nothing definitive anywhere on what the RPM range should be for the Spider. You got guys that let it rev out and you got guys that as soon as it hits a low, you know, boom, they pop it up a gear. And uh, the other thing, if you have, if you do have a spider, that whole thing about you don't need to downshift it. Yeah, that's not true. If you want to operate the spider properly, you're going to have to downshift it. The only time that automatic downshift is really the right thing is when you're coming up to a stop sign or a red light, or you're coming to a stop and it downshifts all the way down into first. That's helpful, but when you're on the road, yeah, you do have to upshift it. You do have to manually downshift it. You can get away with not doing it, but yeah, the, the performance drops drastically if you don't downshift it. So, yeah, so that was another thing from this trip. Like, I was, I was going down the highway and I was doing like 75 miles an hour in fifth gear and I'll be honest with you the the, the, the trike felt smoother getting the RPMs up, up above 4,000 and in some cases 5,000 I didn't go too much over five but it definitely felt smoother so yeah it was like so this trip it was about uh, damn almost 2,000 miles I put on the trike and then once we got down there, we hooked up with another, uh, the other chapters of uh, my MC down there. And we did a little uh, group ride, which was pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> yes, like it, it does feel weird about putting that many miles and then coming back to this. And this is the first time I've been on this in like two weeks now. And then there was actually, there was actually a funny incident when I was coming home. Maybe not funny, funny for me, but not funny for the other guy. And I really do feel bad. So, when we came back, right, we rode from South Carolina. I think we were going to stay in Rhode Island. And that would have put me 66 miles away from the ferry in Delaware. But for some reason, I think they had, uh, what the hell? some graduations there was a soccer thing going on in that area all the hotels were booked up so we had to keep going to Delaware so which put me about 30 miles past the ferry so I had to do a little backtracking and then one of the guys in our group he's got a Harley which one I don't know but uh I'm telling him, I was like, dude, I think your back tire is like bald. And he checks, he's like, yeah, it is bald. Like, the plies were showing. So, we found out where there was going to be a Harley dealership. So, the next day, the rest of the crew drove to the Harley dealership to get this guy's uh, tire fix, which was four hours for them. And they got there, like, before it opened. And it still took four hours to get this tire changed. And, uh... I decided that the night before my wife had booked me the ferry for the next day because I wasn't going back to Staten Island. I was going to go back to New Jersey for uh, was it Memorial Day weekend, which I did. So the next day they head off to the dealership and I head off to the ferry. Now my ferry wasn't supposed to be to 1215. 
and I decided that I'm gonna leave the hotel at 10 and I was taking an incredibly slow ride to the ferry trying to kill time just like I'm doing now I'm just I'm just driving real slow I got no place to be so I'm driving slow and there's a guy riding my ass well not riding my ass but he's definitely behind me so not to be a dick I pull over to the side and I just wave him on I'm like I know I'm going slow you got some place to be so I just pull over and I wave him on dude the guy passed me and I, well, he wasn't going an outrageous amount of speed either and he didn't cross the line I pulled over enough it was a pretty rural area and then as soon as he gets ahead of me maybe like I don't know 500 feet he gets pulled over I felt so bad for this guy I'm like I didn't see the cop ahead of me he was hiding inside a schoolyard or something like that and bam I'm just sitting there and then I just see him pull out and the, the cop pulls out in front of me and just pulls this guy over oh man I'm like you know if, if, if I didn't let if I didn't wave him on because I was doing below the speed limit if he was still behind me he would not have gotten stopped talk about bad luck but then I got onto I got to the ferry and then it was like <laughs> you pull in and I'm like your ticket says 1215 it's like 11 it's like quarter to 11 it's like you want to get on the 1115 which I didn't know was an option so I'm like yes please so I managed to get on the ferry an hour early and then get on the ferry have my breakfast coffee watch the dolphins <laughs> as we cross the bay and then you know then it was like 25 miles to the in-laws house and uh, so I get to the in-laws and then they get the bike unpacked and covered and it starts raining so timing was pretty good and then uh, then headed home and that was the end of the trip and uh, as much as I love my spider and my Riker I took the next couple of days as I don't want to look at them, I don't want to touch them, and I sure as hell do not want to ride them. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, shoot any video of the rally. Uh, I've done it before. I did bring the camera, but I brought that because I thought we were doing Tail of the Dragon. So, that's why I'm not showing you any video because I didn't shoot any. I didn't feel like setting it up. And uh, it was really no different than the year before. Yeah, I'll put a link. There'll be a, probably a card. Okay, which way is it? It'll probably be on my left-hand side. So up there. Uh, I'll link that video of last year's. And then uh, I'll put it in the description if you want to see what you missed. Because like I said, it's the exact same thing. It, nothing changed. Okay, which side of the street do you want to ride on? Thank you. I guess that's all I got to say. Probably not the most interesting thing in the world, but it is what's on my mind. And uh, I'll get back to you with uh, another thoughtful discussion at a later date. All right. But once again, if you made it this far, appreciate it. Uh, like, subscribe, notifications, yada, yada, yada. And I will see you on the next video, whenever that is, on whatever topic that is. So, ride safe. Bye-bye.